Uh, I'm Nimrod from QSpark, and this is not um, this is not a technical talk. Uh, this talk is about the way I do initial pre-interview screening of candidates. That may be interesting for hiring manager. That can be interesting for candidate, not necessarily to my company, but anyone tries to improve his first impression. Of course, assuming that my methods are similar to other managers, so take everything I say with a big chunk of salt. So, two things you should know about me. I screen software developer candidates every day, and I suck at it. So I'm saying uh, profiles and not CVs, because profile is more than a CV. It's also social <laughs> media presence. It is also what the referee says about that candidate. And I suck at it because I need to make a fast binary decision based on very little information, very misleading information, a lot less than I have from an interview, for example. So I'm sure I'm constantly passing on perfect candidates. So how should your profile look like to score interviews? So I think that's the wrong question. You want to be filtered out by some hiring managers for positions that don't match uh, your abilities, for managers you don't want to work for and companies you don't want to work for. So you should ask yourself, what should I write to score the right interviews? So the first thing to remember that an interview is like a first date. As such, there's some emotional aspect here. So I'm not a robot. Recruiters are not robot. I can try to avoid discrimination, but I can't be 100% impartial. So I have different level of eagerness coming to each and every interview. And that not only impacts who I'm going to bring into the interview, but also the order I'm going to contact them and how I'm going to be sound. sound so how this interaction would look like. Uh, so basically, it shows and it really impacts the chances a match would happen. So how to write a CV for a non-robot like me? First thing, tell a story. You're the main character of this story. Uh, you have likes, you have dislikes, you have a story arc. You should focus on projects and achievements. I'm sure you've been already been told that about writing a CV. And remove boring parts. For example, irrelevant technologies. You may have learned Pascal in high school. No one cares about that anymore. Irrelevant jobs. If you've been developer for 10 years, no one cares you worked at a pet, at a pet store. Uh, trivial tools. Uh, I see so many CVs with people saying, I know Bitbucket, I know Jira, I know how to use Grep and Awk. Those things are simple. I may be using them, but you can learn them in an hour. I'm not going to choose someone just because he knows Jira, right? But it doesn't have to be all technical. So your hobbies may can, can help me relate to you. And maybe if you may be also a leader outside your work hours, which is great. And when two people read this story, this CV, they should be able to refer to you as the person who. That could be the person who wrote that neat feature in the app we are all using. That could be the windsurfer. That could be the person who volunteer in a gay use organization. It's definitely not going to be the person who know GCC 9.1. That's not how recruiters talk about people, so give them something to bite into. Uh, LinkedIn page. What am I looking for? Not much. Usually an online version of a CV. Should be accurate, up to date, can have some extra stuff, patents, GitHub links. Some people share professional posts there. Most people, including me, don't bother, so I don't really expect that. But at least have a decent photo. Nothing is more annoying to, than going into a LinkedIn page and finding this. What, what is this person hiding? Actually, it can be more annoying if you get this. 
if it looks like I snapped my bus pass with my phone and uploaded it through a filter, that's exactly what I did. Okay? So how about this? Much better, right? Uh, it's clear, it's professional, uh, it's uh, not too strict, but it's not shirtless on the beach. I already want to work with this person. I do, actually. Uh, so what about personal social page? So uh, this, this is where it gets interesting. You may not like the fact that uh, recruiters look into your personal link, uh, you into your personal Facebook or Instagram page, but they do. So some people don't have any social media present or scrub it, make everything private until it becomes completely neutral. This personal choice, if you don't want to have Facebook, don't have Facebook, but it has some cost. I feel the best approach is to be natural. Don't hide who you are from potential employers. Don't try to look perfect. So if you're politically active, some employers not, are not going to like that, but maybe those are the employers you want to push away, you want to deter. So let some of it be shown so that the right people will choose you. So basically, if you're willing to own it with your coworkers, uh, you can make it public. Of course, some things are private, some things are meant only for your real friends, so you can make it them private. Uh, last thing, I want to talk about pre-interview interaction. So if you're excited about a position, about a company you may be interviewing to, let it show. I get most of my profiles from hiring companies, I know I'm, how much I'm excited about a person. I don't know how excited he is about the position. It's always better to take someone who, for him, this job is his first choice. Also, a lot of time, I find a perfect candidate, but he turned down my job offer. So I really want to focus about, with people that I really have good chance of making a match. Regarding salary expectation, if you ask to, provide them. It can be a range, it could be a number, but provide something. It will save a lot of pointless interview from uh, companies that can match your expectation, but also don't be modest, because that's my best number of estimating how much the person is worth. If I see a great CV with low salary expectation, I can't help my, then ask myself, what's wrong with this person? Okay, thanks, that's it.